I'd like to introduce, uh, my name is Rachel, I'm from WAMDA, uh, but I'd like to introduce to you Ishmael Zodi. He is an analyst with Booz Allen and based in DC. And today we will be talking about smart cars and smart cities, of which he is an expert in. Yeah. Um, and my first question is, well, very obviously, what, what is smart transportation? Is, is Uber smart transportation? Or is it just another taxi? Okay, so it's a really good question. So in, in terms of the smart, being smart is, think about that you are going from point A to point B in a smart way. So you did something differently from the, the way that you used to do. So if you think about, like, let's say that today I saved money, so I was smart today. Maybe I saved some gas, I was smart. Maybe I did something that helped the environment or helped the community. So back to the idea of Uber or the similar companies, that they call themselves like shared economy, under the umbrella of shared economy. This is where we, we share our resources together. So we did some saving, we helped the community and so forth. So all these items under the big, big topic, which is smart city. So smart city has many components like has smart infrastructure, like have smart people, even like some people, uh, some, I would say some of the literature or the, or the researchers say that having a smart city should have first smart people. So how you judge people are smart enough? So they say, for example, number of patents, like how, mu how much they are innovative. So this kind of things. So this smart mobility is a huge topic and includes the save the environment and saving, like, like I said, save money, and you're doing some shared economy, and you're doing your line on the new technologies. And technologies can be many things, can be from car-to-car -car communication, can be like using um, uh, smartphone apps, different smartphone apps. You do maybe, some, some people say that being smart, you are relying more into like, for example, different modes like bikes or walking. So if your city is walkable, so it's more healthy, so you are now doing more, towards more smart mobility. So all these things, part of the smart city, yes, smart mobility, yes. Okay, so how do you turn Cairo into a smart mobi mobility city? So we need to turn Cairo into mobility first. <laughs> <laughs> then, <Fair> call. <laughs> then talk about smart mobility. So uh, it's really challenging. And I, I did a, a presentation yesterday. I was showing the scene one of the traffic, like my daily life when I used to be an undergrad here. So the idea is if you look to the big picture, you will see too many things in one place. You see like uh, buses, pedestrians, biking, motorcycles, many, many things together. So you need first to kind of filter and maybe separate them a little bit. And you need to take off some cars from the scene. So this is back to the idea of shared mobility. So if, for example, if you have Instead of having three, four cars, just remove them and put one car. So now we are relieving a little bit the congestion. If you begin to prohibit certain um, modes, let's say trucks or big buses from certain locations in Cairo, this is you are going towards more, being more smart. So you can do many things, but it needs, so you have, to make this kind of decisions, you need to be either the side, which is the government, decision makers, or you're being as a citizen, as a good citizen, you're trying to, save your place or trying to be in a good place. So those people, this government of decision makers have their own vision and they made some decisions, uh, but not all decisions should be right. For example, when, when I, I, was, I give an example, not building the new roads or like getting a new bridge, this is, oh, this is awesome. Let's add one more infrastructure. So we solve the problem. No, we are shifting the problem from one point to another point. It didn't solve, it maybe solved a little bit, but it's not that big thing. Uh, so you need to look from this side, which is the citizen. So if people are following the rules, people are having like, the, you need to do some innovative way of mobility and this include the shared mobility. And you need to carpool together. Why you're not carpooling? Why you're not biking? Why you begin to walk? So, but the government or the, I would say the city should provide the facilities. For example, let's say, I'm a, okay, I decided to bike today, but there is no place to bike. What should I leave my bike? So maybe people will, I don't know, will annoy me when I'm biking, right? So all those things should come from the decision makers. So it's, I would say, it should work together. But, but each, each part should work. At least not like, okay, I'm not going to do anything because the government is not doing anything. No, you should begin to do some steps. This is my idea. 
That's a pretty big shift from the normal government, you know, infrastructure heavy, yeah, legal light because sort of min mindset, isn't it? Yeah, because I was saying, so any problem has a demand and supply. So because of the conflict or the that is they are not balanced, this is the issue become. So the demand is basically the traffic, or the people walking or driving, and the supply is the infrastructure that we have. Even if people are really willing to build the new places, new, let's say that new Cairo from brand new, okay, but you have to still have the same people, the same pattern, so it does, it, it's not going to happen. So you need to do this balance, and you can play with some small things, and you can do have better management. Let's give an example, so there is this famous uh, thing called odd even rationing. So they're using the license plate that they did in Japan, did many places, so they use the license plate number. If you are odd, you're allowed to this location, and you're like, I'm talking about the lumber. If it's like it's even number, you allow it in this location. This small thing is very small. It didn't change anything, but you just basically did some traffic management. It definitely will affect the traffic, will relieve congestion. Maybe 10% is fine. I accept that, but better than zero, right? So this small things needs to be done. I haven't seen it anywhere. I'm not sure like in, you, in the region. I'm sure why, but at least people can try to. to tr let's let's try it in specific areas, and maybe you can prohibit. And people are actually beginning to do this. Prohibit actually the cars in certain locations, so it be begin to be walkable uh, locations. That's good, so this kind of small things, small steps, it, it's, it's, they are doable, and you can, you can you, you see the difference. Uh, this is. So I want to take you on to one of your pet topics, and that's um, incentives for, uh, um, to get people to stop using their cars and to use other forms of transport. So I think if you could just tell people here about, you know, what, what are your incentives that you um, that you think would work, and what would work here? What would work in Cairo? Okay, so you have many many types of incentives. Incentives is basically uh, trying to give people something so they can give you back. So if you give the people, let's say, uh, you know what? If you didn't use your car today, I'm going to give you twenty pounds, Egyptian pounds. Okay. This is an incentive. Maybe another incentive, you know what, if you didn't use your car today, I would give you 20% off in Starbucks coffee. So there are many ways of giving incentives, and it can be general incentive by just saying, just subscribe in our system, or, or let's say my new company. My company is Zohdi for bike sharing, example. So this, okay, this is my new company. You know what, just subscribe. I will give you 10% off in all your rides, coming rides. This is an example. So it's overall. But sometimes I'm telling, giving you pre-trip incentives, and let's say that you will use, if you use, if you leave your home half an hour later, I will, you will save 20% off in your gas because it's less congestion. Sometimes people don't care too much, I'm leaving 9 a.m. or 9.30, it doesn't matter, but some people have an appointment, but if you don't have an appointment, certain appointment, are you okay? So I'm giving you incentive to shift your time of leaving. So if you think about shifting Many people at the same time, you are going to actually relieve the congestion, right? So this is a kind of incentive. The other type of incentives is en route. So while you are driving, I'm telling you, you need to go this way because this way is cheaper because it's, it's cheaper in terms of, at the end, if you are the driver, if you have a car, the money for you is the gas, how much you pay for your gas and how much you save in your time to arrive at work, right? So if you are paid by, by labor hour, by every hour, so basically if you save one hour, and you, you went there earlier one hour, you're gonna take more money, of more salary, right? So this kind of incentives is important, but people, and there are, I would say very, people like the challenges, and some people are really willing to do get points, just points. Let's say that if you drive today this road, you will get 10 points. People are so happy, so you can have challenge between your friends, you know what, I beat you today because I got 100 points. So people like that, like the games idea, which is called gamification, right? So this idea is, yeah, is there. So what it can work... Have, uh, you, have you seen anyone use that idea, the gamifi a gamification yeah, yeah, idea a, in transport? A, yeah, yeah, it's a huge field. In, in, can you give some examples? So we have... Um, yeah, so the examples, for example, there is a company called Metropia. This company, uh, they do prediction for traffic. So they tell you uh, one hour from now what will be your traffic, okay? So the idea is they tell you, because they know the traffic, they tell you, uh, please leave your home instead of 9 a.m., please leave 10 a.m. 
If you did this, they would give you points. And when you save number of points, certain number of points, you can get like percentage off from a gas, like specific gas station. So they do this. So in this way, they control the traffic. And if you follow their suggestion, they actually know exactly when you left, so they can track you. So they get this information feed. At the same time, they have like deal, deals with other companies, like gas companies or maybe small like uh, ride-sharing companies. So they have all these things. So for example, can tell you, you know what? You can take this ride-share company, and it's gonna you get this number of points. So the points for them is basically it tur the points turns into discounts later when you collect certain points. So they do this. It's real. It's existing. It's a re real company. Everything. That's in a U.S. company. Yes, U.S. company. Yeah. So it's a huge field. Yeah. Wow. Do you see anyone doing anything like this here, in the Middle East and North Africa? So the the only incentive is they we, we save you time. This is like all the companies saying, yeah, I'm saving you time. Uh, this is the only way. But I haven't seen any direct like, points idea. No, I haven't seen it. No. There's an opportunity, people. Yeah. Um, now, I, I know that you are kind of sick of talking about autonomous cars now. But um, are these realistic in Egypt? And are they realistic, do you think, in, say, a place like Dubai? Okay, so... I was thinking, um, so I used to do like my PhD in uh, saying if we have autonomous cars uh, in the future, autonomous basically is a car without a driver, it drives the driver by itself. So if you have autonomous cars in the future, uh, you don't need signals anymore. So basically all the cars will be approaching the intersection and they can pass quickly. And you don't need to have like this green, yellow, uh, red thing. So, and I used to use actually every time I present, I use the traffic scene in Egypt, because we, we are actually, we don't have signals, and all actual cars moving by themselves, so there is no issue. So when it comes to management, it's doable, there's no, there's no worry. When it comes to the car itself, I have been in an autonomous car many times. Uh, it's, it's a scary experiment, experiment, experience, and I, so I tested the, the normal, just like uh, Toyota driverless car, and actually I tested the big army driverless car. So the big, like army cars, are really huge. The width is really big. Okay. So the, the so the guy is like sitting at the place of the driver, but he's you not. You mean you mean Hummers? It's like, like, a, like a Hummer. It's not, yeah, but Hummer, but let's say double size from this, like the width. It's a really we, huge. So le, le, so if I'm sitting like that, the driver is not like this. The driver is like that. So it's very far, and he's not a driver, just sitting, and he's just let let, let, let me show you the car. And it was really hilly place, like ups and down. And I figured out that army cars, they don't have a seat belt. They don't need seat belts. So what happened is, so whenever the car is, he's trying to prove me this is real car, good car, you can see the control. But the problem is I cannot focus with him because I'm jumping all over the place. And the problem, I'm, a big, I'm a big guy, so imagine that I'm jumping, I'm trying to focus. It was, real, <laughs> it was a bad experience, but it's actually worse. He, the guy didn't even pay attention to the road. He just looked at me, and he's very relaxed. I'm not sure why he's relaxed. Just look in front of you. Maybe something will happen. But I tried this. It's a very great experience. And so the autonomous part, it can be like it's not doesn't need to be from your home to your work. The whole trip, it can be partial. Okay. So the the current or the real, uh, I would say, application or existing application now is the self-parking. I think it already exists in Egypt, but uh, I tested by myself. It was the, the Jeep Charity, uh, 2015. So what, what the car is doing is what? So it's moving like that, okay? And this is like a perpendicular parking, and actually detect there is a parking spot here. And then this car just asks you, do you want to park now? Just say press yes, and then remove my hand. So the car began to adjust itself and go back and forth, but I don't even touch any pedals. It was scary as well, because I, it's very, like, it reached the end, okay, and then go move forward. I, it was a test drive. I offered that I'm responsible of the car if something happened, but it's actually working. It's very cool. So the autonomous cars are coming differently. In Egypt, you can still have it. So we have very great opportunities. I mean, forget about autonomous cars in the, like, the urban settings, like in the middle of Cairo, Tahrir, and it will, it will never happen. But you still can have it in long distances, like let's say from Cairo Alex freeway. So you, can, you have very straight line, you have markings in the roads, so it's very easily you can use the 
which cars, and you have dedicated lane. It will be great advertising to Egypt if people do it. I'm not sure why they're not doing it. You can easily get a car and just release and have a great publicity. Definitely, you can do it. There is no problem. I, I, I tested myself. It's working. People, uh, in, in, I would say, in less than five years, you'll see them in the roads. Here? In the world somewhere. The world. Okay. <laughs> well, it sounds like half of your job is actually spent te test driving cars. Yeah. Um, sounds pretty cool. Um, I first, before I ask another question, does anyone from the floor have any questions that you would like to ask Ishmael? I'll take that as a yes. No, 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 I tested all, like Toyota Prius, General Motors, Mini Cars, Ford, uh, the, um, the new Hyundai, many, many cars. They're, they're super cool. I mean, they... Uh, Some of them perform better than They are different. There is no, no, they're almost the same. It, it, so it depends on, like, for example, how they're giving you the warning if there is something happening. Like, is it beeping or the chicken seats or different interfaces? It's like phones. What's the difference between LG and Sam, like, uh, Samsung? It's different brands, but still working, yeah. But, yeah, you should try someday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, I, and if I have the ability to show you, like, a video, they have the... So they, that's, the, like, a track for Hyundai. It's 2015 Hyundai. I'm not saying 2020. It's uh, now. You can go now and, and buy it. Uh, it's basically the, so it's, it's a combination of many features. So they have lane keeping system. So they have like a sensor to see the lanes. Lane keeping. So the, what they do is they have the sensor and they look to the road. They see the markings on the road. And then they, if they will make sure that the car doesn't go outside the marking. Okay? So now they are focused on one direction. The other feature is detect whatever in front of you, an obstacle. Right, so if there is a car in front of you, slowing down, this car will slow down. If not, it will just keep following. So it's very small features, and it exists. It's not, nothing new in terms of that. It's a combination of them is this new. But you do need lines on the side of the road. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. why I'm saying. So you, will, you can have it in freeway. Now, question over there. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm doing marketing for my company. I can do it. It's easy. Uh, so the, we support all new technologies and for, for all the federal level. So when I say, I'm talking about the U.S., I'm, I'm based on the U.S., but they have, may have the Middle East, a huge office as well. So the, in the U.S., we support their client and the U.S. Department of Transportation. They just released a big, big initiative for smart cities and auto vehicle automation. So they release the initiative, and then they need some people like me or like my company in order to do research and see the feasibility of this concept. If they are okay, they will then release, like, a, ask people to do some execution for the work. So we support the, the government to, for the roadmap and what it should be needed and ask people what they think and do research plans and these kind of things. Uh, so the, the new US last week, they uh, released uh, $40 million uh, initiative for Smart City. And they said that the focus should be transportation. And the idea is they asked cities, it's like the challenge. They said all cities in US, please submit your proposal or your idea and prove that you have the ability to be smart in terms of transportation and we'll give you $40 million all over the US. It's a huge thing, a huge topic people are running up. But the thing focus is transportation. So people really care about transportation. Because whenever you solve transportation, you're going to solve many, too many things. But it also still has the electricity part. For example, how much you can save energy, electricity. It has all components, but the main focus is transportation. Yes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Communication, connected vehicles. Yes. Yes, in, in next year, yes. Yes. Next Ma year? Mandatory, yeah, in the US, not here, but in the US, yeah, mandatory that they have the, the like, like devices, in vehicle devices for connectivity, so they can relieve information every 0.1 second. So every 0.1 second, you know exactly where the location of which car. 
And is the US planning on doing anything with this information, or is it just making it mandatory at the moment? Sift, it's, yeah, for safety, for safety issues. So I'll make sure that uh, safety in terms of crashes, crash avoidance, and yeah, this is. Who will be who will be collecting it, and um, is that you? Yeah. And and who will be responsible for actually using it? Okay, so they have the ability, you have insurance issue, you have privacy issue. It's it's I would say they will decide this year. So the, the plan is to have it in the next two years, okay? And they said we need to work and make sure the privacy and people won't be like scared that you are, they can follow you everywhere. So they still, I would say, they, did, they do mul multiple stages of decisions and they are the final stage to make sure that people will accept it. But who will control it? So have the car companies will control the data. But they have like liabilities or relief information that we don't gonna, gonna use this data against you, for example, if you're gonna speed up and then or, or if you take it, for example, to your home because you you are speeding. So it's not going to happen, but it's complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's a big thing that we'll, I can talk about. Okay, I'll, um, we don't have much more time left, so I'll finish with one more question and then throw it open to you guys. So the, let's say it's more transit system, this is where y they can, let's, so for example in Dubai, they have the idea of integrating the social media feeds into the, the bus operation. So for example, if people begin to tweet, oh, what is my bus, it's late, 10 minutes, they actually they, they do this analytics for the feeds, for the Twitter, the tweets, and then they actually feel, oh, some people complaining about 10 minutes late, so they can send you a message, private message, we are sorry, you're gonna send another bus, or this kind of things. So this is the way of smart control operation of transit, so you can do it, and this is one thing. The second thing, they have many applications related to the bus will wait for you. Okay, if you want. so the bus, will, hopefully, uh, the bus will wait for you, so basically the idea is, if many people are running or late, and just press like a button and application, and if they don't receive many requests, people are released, or when I'm, for example, you are, I don't know, maybe you're taking the train and then you're taking the bus, and the old train is late, or this kind of things. So they, what they will do, they will see, you know what, if we wait 10 or 15 minutes for those people, it's much, much beneficial to them, or, or beneficial to us as a tra transit operation to re get a new bus for them, right? So this kind of management, this is the smart way. So at the end, the smart is b coming from the connectivity. So the, all people are connected, citizens, the operation, tra transportation operation, and any levels, can be transit, can be flights, can be cars, whatever. Where? In the US. US, okay. Yes. But, uh, I think a few of those It was originally technology, but now they actually, it's a real question, they are initiated a new program, it's called Mobility on Demand. Mobility on Demand is exactly what you're saying, it's by request, especially with the people with disabilities. So if you cannot just walk to the metro station, so this kind of thing, so you can do a request, and they see the optimum path to pick up all those people, so it's now actually the reinitiate the new programs called mobility on demand. It's a huge thing now. Yeah. If check, there is a company. It's called Bridge. Uh, Bridge B R I D J, not G. Yes. So you know this one. So it's it's a huge. It's getting very very big. So it's working. Yeah. Any other?
Okay, so this question has many, 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 many parts, but uh, definitely the American dream, you have your own house, your own car, and everything, right? So it takes some time people to change their mentality this, this way. But uh, in terms of the, uh, the ownership, it's a really good question because, you know, like Uber, for example, invested in Tundra Mini University, the Big Bit Center for Autonomous Cars. So definitely the, the, the ownership is reduced. Actually, the ownership of cars, the, re the new generation, the millennials, is reducing a lot because of many things. Because of people are really willing to use the smartphone all the time, and the new generation like to like whatever text and message and everything. So, but the effort they're driving, they cannot do this kind of activity and gamification, right? Games. So actually, they take the bus or the trains because they are willing to play with their phones. So actually, it's reduced. this is one of the reasons it's reduced. So definitely, by autonomous car, people would shift from getting the bus into their cars and they can do some activities, some work. So definitely, to reduce the ownership. In terms of this, like I would say, uh, the optimum plan. But still, some people have this ownership of cars. So I would say you're not going to re release all your cars or just sell your cars. But instead of having like two, three cars at your home, if you're a big family, you just have one for emergencies maybe, and then rely more on autonomous cars. So autonomous cars is solving the problem of congestion, solving the problem of parkings, solving the problem about definitely the green thing and environment, everything. So it will affect differently. There are tons and tons of studies. And, but I would say the ownership is not the big, big problem now. It's more into the liability and insurance. All the insurance are freaked out. And OK, who going to pay for it if there is an accident? Right? So it's, it's a big thing. Uh, but yeah, good question. OK, I'm going to, we're slightly over time, but I'll give you one more question. So when you say enterprise, you mean transportation related? Uh, okay, so, U so Uber started with three cars, and now $60 billion company. So you can start small. But I, I always want to see someone actually, and this is back to your question about the first question about the, how we be, can be smart and what we can do, like the bike sharing concept. It's really evolving. And it, you just need to team up with some of the existing companies right now. For example, if you go to Uber here in Egypt and tell them, you know what, just tell me your hotspots where people try to get their first point to next point, and then and maybe map our positions for bike chain in your map, and then we can team with them. Forget about this. How about the, what's called the app here, Erkan? Like the, the one for parking. Rakna, sorry, Rakna. So Rakna, so what Rakna is giving you what? Is giving you the locations where people drop their cars. So you can put your bike sharing points at the points of where they park their car. So and then this is called the last mile, first mile. So for example, you can park your car, let's say in Tahrir parking, but you need to go to the EUC here. So you just maybe take bikes to be much, much faster and easier. Uh, so definitely you can start small with, you can find it five very hot spots and then uh, you can start with it. Actually, the, you remind me, there is a very cool app. Uh, this is really my last, last thing. Uh, it's called, uh, I don't remember its name, uh, Habuku or something like that, but the idea of it is very simple. They said whenever you go from the airport, there you can find a huge line of pe people waiting for the taxi, okay? So the idea is very simple, is what? They let the people for example, you request, I'm going to my home at this location. So they can kind of match people together, and they send you, okay, if me and you were coming out from the Cairo airport, so they, they send me a request, what's your name? Mohammed. So Mohammed will tell you that Mohammed is going to the same place, okay, and then you, your image will pop up, and then uh, we live together, and then we'll be together in one car. It's very simple. They don't team up with the car, they just team with people going from the airport. It's very simple concept, very small, it's not a big thing, but now they're like booming. Thank you.